Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can clean up your mediator handlers by dealing with validation in a better way. And actually I'm going to show you two ways to do this and then you can choose the one that you think works better for you. But both of them in my opinion are great. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsters.com. Or don't because nickchapsters.com doesn't actually exist anymore. If you try to access it you're going to get redirected to a brand new website called dometrain.com. Dometrain is a new brand I created to host all of my existing and future courses and some really really exciting stuff I really can't talk about yet so stay tuned for that but for now to celebrate the launch of the new website I'm offering the first 100 of you a 15% discount on any of my existing courses so whether that is testing dependency injection minimal APIs rest APIs you can go to the website dometrain.com and purchase anything you want and use code launch at checkout for 15% off. Also, let me know what you think of the website. We put a lot of love into that design and I really want to know what you think. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Now back to the video. Okay, let me show you what I have here. I have the same Movies API that we've been working with for the past couple of Mediator videos. And where we left off is that we have these four or five endpoints where you can create, delete, get all movies, get a single movie or update a movie. And kind of the way we do validation is in the handler itself, we're injecting an iValidator of type iMovie, both on the create movie handler and the update movie handler. Now, that is not necessarily wrong or bad. The problem with this is that validation actually looks the same in every scenario. You take the request, you push it into your validator. In this case, I'm using Fluent Validation, so everything is here. I also have a single contract for my movie validation, which we will be changing actually, but it looks the same. You take it, you send it to the validator, get the result back. Is it invalid? Okay, take this validation failed error back. Now, in some cases, you might also want to throw an exception. I prefer more to have a result type, but I'm also going to show you how you can make throwing the exception even better as part of this video. But for now, that's what we're dealing with. And actually, in the previous video, I showed you how you can implement cross-cutting concerns by using pipeline behaviors. We can actually use pipeline behaviors to deal with this very problem as well. And how we can do that? Well, let me show you. First, we are not going to be dealing with this single movie validator anymore. Now we're gonna have a validator per thing that we're validating. So create movie will have its own validator and then update movie will have its own validator. Now, since we're doing this in a more of a vertical slice approach, the validator for each type will actually be in this class. However, if you want to separate them into separate classes, you can, that is absolutely fine. So first, I'm just going to delete this movie validator and then in the create movie, I'm just going to put it below the handler. So it is the exact same thing as before. But now we're dealing with this create movie command instead of that movie object. Update is no different. We're just going to paste the same logic in here, but everything else just stays the same. So now that we have dedicated validators for each object, I'm going to go quickly and change my code. So first, I'm going to move this movie creation thing below the validation. and I'm going to send the request object for validation here. And I'm also going to change the iValidator to use the new object. So that's for create and I'm going to do the same for update. And that's it. So let's see how we can use mediators pipeline behavior to implement better logging. And ultimately my goal here is to remove this validation to a separate location. So before we even get into the handle method for the movie, we've already validated. So the way this will work is I'm going to go to validation and create a new class. I'm going to call that validation behavior and it's going to be generic. So it's going to have a T request and a T result, but the implementation will be an I pipeline behavior of type T request and the response type will be a result of type T result comma validation failed because that's how all of my methods that do any validation look like. We have a result of the object we're going to return at the end of the validation or validation failed. So we're going to go and implement missing members and since this is a pipeline we are calling next to go to the next thing in the pipeline. But what we need to do here is actually only validate before we push into next. For that, I'm just going to copy the logic of any of the other validators. So I'm just gonna copy this validation result, paste it here, and then push it over. Now, of course, I need to inject the validator. So I'm going to say private read only i validator of type t 
request, which hopefully we have already registered. So anything that needs validation should have a validator registered in DI. So now I have that, I can pass it here, turn this into async, and ta-da, I have my validation logic. All I need to say now is return await next, so the next thing in the pipeline, and that is it. Now I have my logic, which means that the only thing left to do is actually register my validator behavior. So to register this, all I'm going to say is dot add behavior. I'm going to chain this method to the registration of mediator over here. And I'm going to need the I pipeline behavior. First, let's also make this a, a not null in terms of constraints because we don't really want to have this be null in any situation. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to have to do this, unfortunately, once per type. So I pipeline behavior for the create movie command, which is supposed to return a movie over here. And then I need to have an implementation of this, which is the validation behavior. And then we have the T request, which is the command and the T response. So same thing over here, based in here. And that is it. And I'm going to have to do the same thing for update. So update returns a nullable movie and then update movie command over here. And then the same thing over here. So nullable movie and update movie command. And that's it. Now, all I need to do is go to the create movie and remove the validation stuff. We no longer need them here. I'm just going to comment this out and stick a breakpoint as well. And I'm also going to do the same with update. So validation now is in a central location for both requests. And then I'm going to also add a breakpoint here in the validator. So Let's see what happens when now someone tries to create a movie. How does the application flow? Oh, and this failed, but I know why it failed. I think I accidentally gave it way too much here. Yeah, so we don't need the result. We don't need this. This is just uh, used behind the scenes because we already have the constraint of the result over here. So we don't need that. So let's just delete that and let's see what we have. So API is running. I'm going to go and create a movie. And as you can see in terms of flow, First, we go into the validation behavior and we have the request type, we have the next, we have everything here. I'm going to step over the validation. Now, this is invalid and the reason why it's invalid is because a movie with that slug already exists in the system because we created it before. So we're going to throw a validation back. And as you can see, we never got to the handler. We just returned early. We short circuited that request processing there. But if I say create the sequel to Nick the Greek, which came out this year or actually last year, then it's going to go into validation. Everything will be fine. It's going to call the next thing in the pipeline, which is the handler itself. It's going to create the movie and return a good request 201 created. And that is it. That's how simple it is to clean up your handler and have your validation in a nice unified way in a centralized location. Now, a few things I want to point out. This does not look good. So what I recommend is that you actually just create a validation extensions class and in here you have something like this you have a validation extensions add validation extension method on the mediator service configuration which allows you to wrap a lot of that validation logic and now all you need to do is actually go into the program.cs and say dot add validation or type create movie command that is supposed to return in the happy path a movie and that is it and then the same thing for update so update movie comma this and here you go this is just way way nicer and you get the exact same experience as before in terms of workflow now if you want to go even further what you can do is you can actually write an extension method that heavily deals with reflection and register everything that implements an i request handler with type result that also has generic type validation failed and automatically register that by convention. I'm not gonna show that here because it's just very complicated reflection logic. I think that even having it as that is fine. The problem is you're gonna have to remember to add an extra line of code every time here. There's pros and cons up to you if you wanna implement it. But some of you don't use a result type to return a good and a bad path. Some of you just return a validation exception. And that is fine. It's a different approach to deal with the same scenario and have the same outcome. Now, there are some differences in terms of performance. We're not going to touch on them. We're just going to look into the problem itself. So what happens if you are throwing an exception for validation? Well, what happens is you can actually have a more simplified flow on the mediator aspect. Of course, you can just use the same approach and simply say validate and throw a sync. And if you validate and throw a sync over here, then 
the flow won't go any further. You can just leave it as it is or say await next, but never actually call next because you're going to throw at this point and then have a middleware to catch that. But I'm not going to touch the behavior for this demonstration. I'm actually going to use another feature of Mediator, which I think works better for this approach, which is a preprocessor. So Mediator has behaviors which are like pipelines where you have something before and you can have something after the handling of the request, but you can also have preprocessors where you have something dealing with a request before it even gets to a handler, or you can have a post processor, which is you get the result of the handler and you do something about it. And the benefit of them is that they're actually automatically registered. So what I'm going to do is just comment out my validators and I'm going to add my validation processor or preprocessor because it's going to happen before we go into the handler. Now, preprocessors actually only need the T request over here. So it is an I request preprocessor of type T request. And I'm going to implement the missing members. I'm going to say that this is just not null. And then since I have the request, I'm going to inject the I validator of type T request. And that's it. I'm just going to say validator over here. And all I need to do here is say async await validator dot validate and throw async pass the request and that's it. If you want, you can also pass down the cancellation token. And that is it. This is automatically registered, meaning that now if I run the application, it will actually throw an exception on validation. So let me just quickly demonstrate that. I'm going to go here, try to create the movie that already exists. It's going to throw the exception and you see a very nasty validation exception, but we can deal with this because if you are throwing exceptions, what you're very likely to have is a validation middleware, which will catch that validation exception and convert it into a bad request. That would look something like this. So I have a validation mapping middleware and that's how the code would look. So we have the request delegate in the middleware. We have the invoke async method. We get the HTTP context. We send it next. If we have validation exception, we get in here and we rewrite the request to be a bad request with a validation failed response type. So now to register this, I need to go all the way above the map controllers and say app.use middleware. And I'm going to have the validation middleware or mapping middleware. And now I'm just going to say debug. And what's going to happen is the request will first go in here in the preprocessor. And I didn't need to explicitly register this either. So I'm going to say, just create the movie. We go into the preprocessor. It's going to throw the exception. The exception is caught in the middleware. We have all the details we need. We map it to that response and we just write it. And now you have the exact experience as before, but with a generic preprocessor, which I think is also a great solution. Now you're probably looking at this and thinking the obvious, that this approach will actually only work for create and update because they do have a registered validator and will fail for get or delete. And you would be right. If I go ahead and I just quickly run this and I try to get a movie, I'm going to get an exception because the type for that request type is not registered for a validator. Now we can actually fix this and there's a few ways to address this. The one I'm going to use is the following. I'm going to go and create a new interface. That interface will be called iValidatable request. And all it's going to have is effectively two interfaces. The first one will just be an iValidatable request interface, which is just empty. And the other one will actually implement that original empty one and then also implement the i request of the response. And if I do that, what I can do now is actually go to the things that I want to have validation in place and have them use the iValidatable request interface instead of just the bare I request one. And the moment I do that, I can go to my preprocessor and I can say, you know what? This is only valid for T request, which is of type iValidatable request. And that is it. Now what's going to happen if I go ahead and just debug this is that things that used to have validation like create, for example, will still have it. For example, we are coming in here in the preprocessor. We are stepping over this. We're getting the exception. We are catching the exception in the middleware and then we're writing it. So nothing was lost there. We still have the exact same thing. But if I go to something like get all movies now, that preprocessor is completely ignored because it doesn't match that request coming in. So that way you can automatically register them and have better control in terms of what can be validated 
and what can't. I really, really like this approach. Now, which one you use depends on your programming model, but I showed you both approaches and you can choose for yourself. But now I want to know from you, how are you dealing with validation in your own code base? And are you using Mediator and have you used something like this? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, more content like this, ring the bell as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.